rivalry week for the pinstripers. We begin our look at sports on the baseball diamond where last weekend the Yankees welcomed their American League nemesis Boston to Yankee Stadium for a three game series. The Yanks rallied to steal the first game last Friday night, but the Red Sox managed to take game two on Saturday as the Bombers pitching faltered. That set up the rubber game on Sunday night baseball one that the Yanks let slip away. We go inside the locker room for more. The Yankees managed to win the opening game of their weekend series with Boston on Friday night, but the Red Sox came back on both Saturday and on Sunday night baseball, a big victory for Chris Sale and Boston on Sunday night. It's big. Um, anytime you can come up here and, and win a series in division this late in the year, it's, it's, it's big. Um, you know, like I've said before, we know where we're at, we know what we need to do, uh, we know the task at hand, and uh, you know, we're just grinding every day. The Yankees had a 2-1 lead in the ninth inning with Araldis Chapman on the mound, but rookie Rafael Devers hit a big home run against the left-handed closer. Yeah, an incredible swing uh, off, uh, you know, 100 mile an hour plus fastball. So, uh, you know, he doesn't fear the moment. Uh, he's he's been uh, he's jumped feet first into this rivalry, uh, and it couldn't come at a better time. In extras, it was another rookie for Boston, Andrew Benintendi, who would have the go-ahead run for the Red Sox. Every every loss is tough, you know, especially um, you know how we're battling tonight, fighting, you know, especially going up against Chris Sale, you know, probably the best pitcher in the game right now. You know, it was it was a grind. You know, we just weren't able to come out with it in the end. We just got to keep taking it one day at a time. Uh, if we focus on that instead of looking down the, down the road right now, you know, it'll all work out. We just got to keep winning the next the next game. The Yanks did win the next game, and the game after that, and the game after that, and the game after that. This year's Subway Series was a one-way fair. Gary Sanchez homer to match a career high with five RBI. Luis Severino got right back on track, and the Bronx boys of summer made it a four-game sweep of the crosstown rival Mets with a 7-5 victory Thursday night. Four games behind first place Boston in the AL East. The Yankees begin a three-game series tonight at Fenway Park. Aaron Judge launched a titanic homer. Didi Gregoria snapped a seventh-inning tie with a two-run double as the Yanks beat the Mets 5-3 on Wednesday night. The Yankees took the first two games of the four-game series at Yankee Stadium on Monday and Tuesday and then took back-to-back -back at Citi Field on Wednesday and Thursday night, respectively. Citi Field has been a sanctuary for opposing hitters this season. On Wednesday, Aaron Judge was the latest slugger to hit a 450-foot home run against the Mets. Given that he hit a 457-foot homer into the third deck in left field, Judge was undaunted that he also set the Major League record for consecutive games with a strikeout by a position player. He broke the single season mark set by Adam Dunn in 2012, according to the Elias Sports Bureau. The Yankee Phenom's second half slide might mean he's no longer the clear front runner for the American League MVP, but his name still carries a lot of weight. And if he can just regain some of what he had been going on in the first half, it's still a very good possibility. Aaron Judge's mammoth home run on Wednesday was his 37th of the season. That ties Albert Pujols, then with the 2001 Cardinals, for third most by a rookie in a season. Judge trails Mark McGuire, 49 in 1987 with the A's, and Frank Robinson, 38 in 1956 with the Reds. Sonny Gray outpitched Jacob deGrom, Jacoby Ellsbury, and Sanchez each homered, and the Bombers held off the Mets 5-4 on Tuesday night to sweep both the Subway Series games in the Bronx. Time for some quick hitters from around the world of sports. Mets pitcher Matt Harvey continued his rehab stint in Brooklyn on Wednesday. Harvey went three scoreless innings against Aberdeen of the Class A New York Penn League. Harvey struck out the side on 10 pitches in the third inning. Meanwhile, staff ace Noah Syndergaard was back added in the bullpen on Tuesday, appearing to throw strikes across the plate in his first action since tearing his rat his right lat, excuse me. Good news for the Amazons on both fronts. The Mets traded second baseman Neil Walker to Milwaukee and of course, as mentioned last week, have brought up stud prospect Dominic Smith, who looked pretty good. He homered in the Subway Series against the Yankees. The WNBA and its players showed their support for the victims of racially charged violence in Charlottesville. Players from several teams locked arms at center court and held a moment of silence before Wednesday's games. What a tragedy. Our thoughts and prayers go out to all of the families. Kevin Durant says he will not visit President Donald Trump at the White House if the NBA champion Golden State 
Warriors are invited. Nah, I don't want to do that, said Durant, the 2017 W, uh, excuse me, NBA Finals MVP. I don't respect who's in office right now. Durant spoke to ESPN on Thursday. The Warriors visit the nation's capital February 28th to take on the Washington Wizards. The White House has not extended a formal invitation to the Warriors. Former Cleveland Cavaliers player Dante Jones said Steph Curry doesn't make his list of top 10 NBA players. That's ludicrous. LeBron James flew into New York City on Tuesday morning to take part in pickup games with Carmelo Anthony and Kevin Durant, among others. That's pretty cool. Must be nice. Giants signal caller Eli Manning would turn 40 at the end of the 2020 season. He is under contract through the 2019 season. He believes he can play through 40. I think so, too. Go win another Super Bowl, Eli. For the first time in a week, Jets quarterback Josh McCown tallied more reps than Christian Hackenberg in a practice. Jets wide receiver slash punt returner Lucky Whitehead will have surgery to repair his broken foot, according to head coach Todd Bowles. First, the misidentification case and then the release in Dallas. And now this, nothing lucky there for the wide receiver. The Jets announced the creation of the New York Jets Fan Hall of Fame. Debuting this season, dedicated fans will be chosen via an annual selection process coordinated by Jets personnel legends and a fan vote. Fans can nominate themselves or be nominated through a third party. The inaugural class will feature three inductees. They will be honored at halftime of the final home game this season. And yes, they will receive a commemorative jacket. On the NFL gridiron, the Oakland Raiders don't arrive for a couple of years, but they're already Las Vegas' team at the betting window. This offseason, more bets have been placed on the Raiders to win the Super Bowl than any other team at sports books around town. Oakland's Super Bowl odds, which opened as high as 20 to 1, have moved to a short as 6 to 1. Seattle Seahawks defensive end Michael Bennett said the conversation about anthem protests would change if white players became part of the movement. It would take a white player to really get things changed, Bennett said Wednesday on ESPN because when somebody from the other side understands and they step up and they speak up about it, it would change the whole conversation. Bennett elected not to stand for the anthem during the preseason. We are a week away from McGregor Mayweather. The Nevada State Athletic Commission approved the request from Floyd Mayweather and Conor McGregor for smaller boxing gloves on Wednesday, just 10 days before their highly anticipated fight on August the 26th. The one-time exemption will allow both fighters to wear 8-ounce gloves during their 154-pound bout. I'll have my fearless prediction for the fight next Friday. Summer is winding down. That means the Bronx crowned another champion at the Hoops in the Sun Round Ball Classic. Take a look. New York City playground legend Corey Fisher put together the family with one mission at hand. Win the 2017 Hoops in the Sun Round Ball Classic at Orchard Beach. But the point guard suffered a hand injury late in the season and instead was relegated to GM duty Sunday against the Brooklyn Stompers, who were making their second straight appearance in the Hits Pro-Am Final. The Stompers fell just short last season, and even without Fisher in the family's lineup, Brooklyn watched as the team from the Bronx edged them in the closing minutes behind the three-headed monster of Jordan Aaron, Mike Glover, and Chaz Williams. Aaron, who garnered the league's favorite nephew award from announcer G Stacks, upstage league MVP. PJ Will of the Stompers and round to being named championship MVP. The family had come together at the right time to be crowned kings of the Bronx Riviera. Great season at Orchard Beach. Congrats to the family. There has been a flurry of inaccurate reports regarding the condition of famous wrestler Ric Flair, who is a resident of Atlanta, Georgia. Per a source close to the family, Flair did not undergo heart surgery nor did he suffer a heart attack. Upon medical attention, what was thought to be an intestinal blockage wound up requiring part of his bowel to be removed. Oof. Flair's alcohol intake has exacerbated his issues. He spoke with Sports Illustrated exactly nine days ago, admitting that drinking has been a major issue throughout his career. The end of the summer also means that the Little League World Series is going down. 16 teams are split into two brackets, eight international teams and eight teams from the United States. Each bracket is a double elimination tournament with the U.S. winner facing the international winner in the Little League World Series championship game on Sunday, August 27th. This is the 71st Little League World Series, which started in 1947. The United States has won 34 Little League World Series, including the team from Maine and well, Little League, New York, capturing the 2016 championship. And on a final sports roundup note, the IndyCar Racing Series will take center stage at Pocono Raceway this weekend in PA. We'll have a full report next time on the show. Those are the headlines. We hit the C-list for the announcement of the week.
Nothing top Tuesday's announcement on SportsCenter by Marvin Bagley, now the number one recruit in the 2017 class. He will play for Duke next season. His reclassification from the 2018 class to 2017 and his decision to attend Duke has changed everything. I think they will win it all. It's nice to see a college basketball story dominating the headlines in mid-August. Duke's elevation to the number one spot over Arizona after Bagley's announcement was not an automatic move, but they do boast a very deep lineup despite the program's losses from last season. Bagley's breathtaking versatility means a healthy Duke team guided by Coach K will enter the season as the number one team in the preseason and polls and as the favorite to win the national title. I'm filling out my bracket right now. Imagine that, Rena. You have to wait until the day before McGregor Mayweather for my pick there, but I give you the college basketball national champion in August. That's your sports. I'm Bobby C.